In this short game, Grandmaster Leonid Stein, who was among world's top 10 players in 1960s, shows a very deep understanding of chess. On move 8, he refrained from making a natural-looking move, which would be made automatically by a vast majority of chess players. Instead, he found a much more sophisticated move, which prepared the upcoming combination. And on move 11, the game was basically over. His opponent, Lyubomir Lyubovich, started with b3, and Stein played e5, bishop b2, d6, e3, knight f6, c4, g6, d4, bishop g7. If white captures the pawn, black, of course, doesn't capture, but plays knight g4, attacking the pawn with a knight. White, of course, cannot capture on d6, as the bishop on b2 would fall, so the pawn on e5 is pinned. White would defend the pawn, but black would attack it with a second knight. And with the next move, black would return the pawn by capturing on e5 with a knight. Instead of this, after bishop g7, white played knight c3. e takes d, queen takes d4. But now there is very unpleasant x-ray. And if f6 knight moves, the queen would be under attack. Not right now, of course, as the bishop is currently unguarded. So Stein first castles kingside. And after knight f3, we have reached the turning point of this game. Most chess players would immediately, without thinking much, play natural-looking knight c6, developing the knight on the active square with tempo, attacking the queen. But not Leonid Stein. He found a much more sophisticated move. He developed the knight on d7. At first sight, it doesn't make sense, because on d7 the knight is less actively placed than on c6, and also knight d7 comes without gaining a tempo. However, Stein had his point. He was going to move this knight to c5, from which it would defend f6 knight after it jumps to e4. And also, after knight e4, not only the queen would be under attack, but also after the queen retreats, the knight on c3 would be attacked two times by the bishop and by e4 knight. And the only two squares the queen uh, would be able to defend to keep the defense of the knight, which is defended only once by the bishop, would be d3 and d2. But both of these squares would be under black knight's control. d3 would be controlled by c5 knight, and d2 would be controlled by e4 knight. And that means that after the queen retreats to another square, the knight on c3 would fall, and black would just win a piece. So by playing knight d7, Stein created immediate threats. White played bishop e2, knight c5, with deadly threat knight e4, and white played rook d1, setting a trap. If black played the intended knight e4, which at first sight is winning on the spot, attacking the queen and also the knight, white prepared a deadly Queen takes g7, check, winning the first piece for the queen. After king takes g7, the second piece with check. And after king retreats, the third piece. That was the point behind uh, rook d1 to pin d6 pawn. Now the knight on c5 is untouchable. And white would get three very active pieces for the queen. The queen would be absolutely ineffective in this position, as the, the queen wouldn't have any targets of attack, because white doesn't have any weaknesses, while black has a lot of weaknesses. On the king side, dark squares are catastrophically weakened, and black doesn't have dark squared bishop to defend these squares, while white has a great dark squared bishop on the long diagonal, and together with the knights, this bishop would create deadly threats to black king. The knights would be rerouted to f6 and h6, uh, and the pieces, of course, would be much stronger than the queen, and black would be dead lost in this position. But there is another move. So as knight e4 doesn't work, Stein played knight g4, attacking the queen, and it turns out that the queen doesn't have any good squares to retreat. For example, if queen d5, then just bishop e6. Queen g5, bishop f6. So the queen is constantly under attack. Queen f4, g5. Queen g3, and simple bishop takes c3 check, and knight e4, attacking the queen and the bishop, and also f2. 
and the queen doesn't have any good squares after queen h3 g4 knight can retreat again the queen would be attacked by the bishop or instead of queen d5 if queen f4 which was relatively better then still black would have a strong move f5 taking under control e4 squares threatening knight e4 and for example if knight d4 then g5 queen f3 knight e4 of course white won't be able to capture because after f takes e f file opens and knight would capture on f2 with a fork and if castles defending f2 then simple knight takes h2 and after king takes h2 g4 queen f4 the queen would be lost white chose another move queen d2 but after this black has a simple but beautiful combination you can pause the video and try to find it so the knight sacrifice knight takes f2 and it turns out that if king takes f2 then there is a forking motif knight e4 check would be a fork not immediately of course because at the moment the knight is defending e4 but the defender of e4 can be eliminated with tempo bishop takes c3 and no matter if white captures on c3 with a queen or with a bishop knight e4 still would be a fork check and the knight controls both squares d2 and c3 that's why after knight takes f2 white castled kingside but now besides extra pawn black gets extra exchange knight takes f2 and also e3 is terribly weakened and that means that white is dead lost of course white didn't want to resign after move 11 and uh, continued the resistance till move 26 and very soon after knight e6 check queen takes e6 white finally resigned hit the like button as it's really helpful for the channel growth and see you in the next videos